This is QTV Midday News coming to you live from our studios on Caraba Avenue. I am Jennifer Sonko and here are the news headlines. We take a look at the Gambia government's recently launched national employment policy, which has set a target to create 150,000 jobs in five years. The Gambia government, in partnership with Diaspora, held the sixth take in the nation forum on Saturday on the theme supporting private sector action for public benefit. 20 farmers and agricultural science students on Saturday concluded three days training on poultry production at the Department of Livestock Veterinary Hall in Abuko. The skillful action of a truck driver who was carrying over 1,800 bags of cement has averted an accident which could have claimed lives in Farafenye in the North Bank region. In international news, eight high school students who were expelled from a senior school in Ghana for insulting the Ghanaian president in a viral video have been allowed to resume classes. Now those were the main headlines and now the news in detail. Do stay with us. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV News and I'm Jenna Bosonko. Now, the most recent data by the Gambia Bureau of Statistics shows 230,000 of the Gambia's adult population are without employment. To reverse the trend, the Gambia government recently launched a national employment policy with a time frame which sets to target to create 150,000 jobs in five years. QTV's Momodou Lamin Choi has been speaking to the Trade and Employment Minister to find out how government intends to realize its job creation target. In November last year, President Adam Abara launched his government's 2022-2026 National Employment Policy and Action Plan. The ambitious job creation target when realized could significantly stimulate the Gambia's economic growth and improve the livelihoods of the population. President Barra believes that the employment creation target is attainable in five years. Overall, the policy target is to create 150,000 jobs over a period of five years. <laughs> this is an ambitious objective, but with the concerted efforts of government and our partners, it is attainable. That policy announcement by the president has effectively set the government a target to address one of the most pressing economic challenges ever to face the country. In addition, there appears a unified and expressed commitment among the cabinet to deliver results, perhaps beyond the 150,000 jobs target. Here is the Minister of Trade and Employment, Babukar Ojuf. And um, I am uh, convinced, and you can maybe ask me this question five years down the road, um, I'm convinced that we can even exceed the 150,000 jobs. Um, our strategy includes um, encouraging industrialization, which is also in line with um, the African Union's Agenda 2063. Massive employment creation for its citizens is what every legitimate government would like to achieve as its legacy. The right strategies must be implemented to realize such an ambition. I asked the Trade and Employment Minister about government strategies to implement its national employment policy. But also, we are looking at other strategies like um, we are working on having at least one special economic zone in the country before the next two years. We are working on industrial parks, we are working on having um, other forms, even the LUMO, um, the LUMO which is a traditional um, trading center. We have started working on a new model for it. We want to modernize it, we want to institutionalize it, formalize it, and introduce it even in areas where you don't have lumos. So this is just to show you that the initiatives are on the ground. We have the policy environment, which is right. We have the strategies that are right. And all we are looking for is partnership. To create more jobs in the Gambia requires more business investment in the country. The Minister of Trade and Employment is at the heart of initiatives to promote investment and bring the right investors and businesses into the country. We want to create the environment as a government for investment in the Gambia to become very attractive with incentives that will make it look like you are coming in and you are coming for profits. Everything you need to do, there are certain areas like the land on which the investment is being made. 
um, tax breaks, things like special investment certificates. There are so many things that government does to make investment very, very, very simple and you know seamless for, for potential investors to come in and share the profits that the Gambia can generate. Out of a working age population of 1.26 million people, 35.2 percent are without jobs, according to the 2018 Labor Force Survey by the Gambia Bureau of Statistics. Also, the findings from the survey puts youth unemployment at 41.5 percent. This data could potentially go up given the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the labor market. A desk review by the Minister of Trade estimates job losses at 52,752 for informally employed people in both the formal and informal sectors because of the COVID-19 outbreak and the preventive measures implemented in the country and globally. In the latter regard, many people were laid off in the tourism industry, a significant employer when tourism travel shut down. Mahmoud Lamin Choi, QTV News. Interesting. Now, the Gambia government, in partnership with Diaspora, held the sixth stake in the nation address forum on Saturday on the team supporting private sector action for public benefit. Mahmoud Gajak was there and he now reports. The stake in the nation forum is mandated as an annual consultative event in the Gambia Diaspora Strategic Plan and the Gambia National Development Plan. The forum brought together the diaspora group government ministries, departments, agencies, and development partners. Professor Jibril Fall, director of GK Partners and the MSDG project, talks about the diaspora's contribution to the socio-economic development of the country. Ndekete, gaining citizenship in Spain, the kingdom of, or gaining citizenship in Italy or Canada, the commonwealth of, Ndekete is not a subtraction of Gambianness. It is an addition. Ndekete, the remittances that we send do not subtract and diminish the sender. They improve and add on all. Over $712 million of remittances was recorded by the Central Bank of the Gambia in 2022, accounting for 60% of the country's GDP. Abdullah Sirejalo, first Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia, highlighted the contributions of the diaspora in the socio-economic development of the Gambia. The diaspora in particular has been very instrumental in the transmission of remittances to the Gambia. As such, its members are considered very important stakeholders in improving the lives and livelihoods of Gambians. Remittances continue to play a pivotal role in the economic development of the Gambia and its economic impact. The ministers of basic and secondary education and finance both spoke of the significant contributions the diaspora community contributes in the various sectors of the economy. I am pleased to announce that the 1st June 2022, the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education signed a framework agreement with the MSDG project to undertake practical activities aimed at optimizing private actions for the public benefit of educational development in the Gambia. The diaspora remains a crucial factor and actor of national development in the new NDP. The Gambian diaspora strategy as incorporated in the National Development Plan, and I quote, stipulates, beyond recurrent consumptive expenditure, there is on tap opportunity to attract remittances towards durable investments and economically productive activities in the Gambian economy. Gambians in the diaspora support the country not only through remittances, but also enhancing knowledge. Dr. Veronica Pierce Njai Carr is the co-founder of the Gambia Diaspora Experts Initiative. I immigrated to the United States in the 1980s. My academic career started in 1996. As faculty, I reviewed textbooks from publishers to determine relevance for students' learning and shipped the unused books to the Gambia School of Nursing to help build the library resources. Interestingly, my regular textbook contributions consequently benefited 
students in the baccalaureate and master's programs at the University of the Gambia. As I developed in my role as an educator, I wanted to contribute more. Gambia is our country, and we have a stake here. Babakar Juf, the Minister of Trade, Industry, Employment and Regional Integration, deputizing for President Barrow, says government sees the contribution of the Gambia diaspora as an important pillar of the economy and recognizes the diaspora as the eighth region of the Gambia. Since the change of government in 2017, my government declared the Gambian diaspora as the eighth region of the Gambia and created a diaspora directorate at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That recognition, ladies and gentlemen, demonstrates my government's commitment to our diaspora as we consider them a constituent with immense potential to contribute to the development of this country. As the event shows, the diaspora remain an important element of the Gambia's present and future. Mumuru Gajaga, QTV News. Now, supporting private sector action for public benefit is indeed key. Now, moving away from that, three days training for over 20 farmers and agricultural science students on poultry production Saturday ended at the Department of Livestock's Veterinary Hall in Abuko. The training was supported by the Migration and Sustainable Development Fund, facilitated by the Gambia Diaspora Experts Initiative. And Sumano Sunyasi was there and fastened this report. The instructor for this important training is Dr. Jara Jang, a visiting Gambian associate professor from Cornell University in the USA, an expert in poultry diseases. Dr. Jang, who is also a founding member of the Gambia Diaspora Experts Initiative, explains the reasons for setting up this initiative. Just to teach them more about poultry diseases and uh, how to recognize diseases so that they will be able to help uh, the farmers and the farmers might be able to recognize these disease problems and that will help them to sell their products and help improve the poultry chain in the Gambia and strengthen it. So it's more just like a capacity building. CRs that although there is high interest in poultry farming among young people in the Gambia, the lack of knowledge on how to properly manage a poultry farm or treat poultry diseases remain major challenges. There's a big investment uh, financially, so they need to really keep these birds healthy. So that's one of the main highlights, is this practical exercise. And we have produced a manual also for them that they can take with them, uh, that they can look. They have uh, pictures of diseased organs, so they can compare it. And then they can call the veterinary service and get some advice on how to treat these birds. With poultry farming now becoming a popular business in Gambia, especially amongst young people, Dr. Jan is optimistic that the country's poultry industry have a huge impact in reducing the importation of chicken in the coming years. However, she adds that it would require a concerted effort and the provision of sufficient support to poultry farmers. One person has 50,000 birds, but that's an anomaly. Most people have 1,000, maybe, or even less. So that's not a lot of chickens. Uh, maybe for me, because <laughs> I see millions of chickens. <laughs> I see farms that have million birds on them. But, you know, it's young and it's growing and there are a lot of enthusiastic farmers. I really like the enthusiasm. Uh, it was great uh, when we worked with them the first weeks. I also like the enthusiasm of the young people. The Gambia Diaspora Experts Initiative is an apolitical, non-tribal association that supports, coordinates and facilitates the full participation of Gambian diasporas in all sectors to support national development. Antoine Esonyasi for QTV News. Brilliant initiative there. From that story by Antoine Esonyasi, we will now go for a short commercial break. And when we come back, we have a local as well as international news. Do stay tuned. Being the Gambia's trusted network, QCell continues to provide the fastest and most reliable internet service in the Gambia. With 4G plus internet speed, you are guaranteed fast and reliable internet anytime. Anywhere with QCell. Get a QCell SIM card now at any of our customer care centers and enjoy the fastest 4G internet in the Gambia. For more information, call our customer care on 111. QCell, Sunyabus, we innovate, others follow. Good news from the Gambia's premier certified auto mechanic garage, Espas Motors. Have you been having trouble with your vehicle? No worries, Espas Motors have got you covered. This December 2 January, drive right to Espas Motors for your general diagnostic at a very affordable price. We diagnose, coolant level, 
battery life, power steering fluid and brake fluid, timing belt checks, suspension checks, tire check, brake pad checks, engine and transmission leaks, transmission, light checks, headlights, signal brake, parking lights. Drive in and drive away with the confidence that all your car issues have been solved. So what are you waiting for? Rush now. For a great deal, we are located at Burton Harding Highway, opposite Kotu Power Station, Espas Motors, the nation's premier certified auto mechanic garage. Call us on 3522222. 353-4444 Espas Motors To make sure your company's products and services reach your potential customers, it is essential that you choose the right channel for your marketing purposes. QTV has the widest reach locally and beyond and we can give your business the visibility it needs. Call QTV Marketing on +220-324-4444 or email us at marketing at qtv.gm and take your business to the world. Welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV News and I am Jenna Basonko. Now, the skillful action of a truck driver who was carrying over 1,800 bags of cement has averted an accident which could have claimed lives in Farafene. The story by our regional correspondent Don Williams is narrated by Jildin Jai. The incident happened last week. A Senegalese truck driver experienced brake failure but was able to control the truck until he rammed into a packed truck while trying to avoid people. If it wasn't for his quick thinking, scores of people could have been killed or injured, as the incident happened in the morning peak period. City for Sankare, president of the Farafenya Market Committee, explains how it all happened. It was one fine afternoon when a Senegalese truck driver lose control of the brake. So he, when he realized that, he informed one of the Jakarta man to inform the people on the street that let them move the, away from the road because he has lose control of the brake. And this is what exactly the Jakarta man did. So while he was coming along the way, he saw a, a truck loaded with timber along the highway. He went around so that he knocked that car and then eventually the truck stops. Mr. Sankare added that if not for the bravery and skill demonstrated by the truck driver, the situation would have been catastrophic. He advised roadside vendors and other road users to be vigilant. The market was almost filled up and then people were almost along the way. You have vendors on the highway and uh, along the side of the road and then people are also busy on the highway. So it was going to be a catastrophe. So that being the case, I advise all the vendors, in as much as we are here to find something to carry him for the family, we should also be very careful so that things of this nature, we can be free from them. So I advise people, those on the street, that also let them always walk along the footpaths instead of the highway because it is very unsafe. Anything could happen at any given time. A police officer who spoke to us on conditions of anonymity said the driver was not arrested and praised him for his courage. Vendors selling by the highway seems unbothered about the passing traffic, which could pose a danger to their lives. This time, an accident has been averted. But who knows what danger may be looming given the combination of road and vehicle conditions and the proximity of people to the traffic. For QTV News, I am Jul Denyai. Now, thumbs up to that skillful driver from that. Let's take a look at news beyond our borders. Eight high school students who were expelled from Chiana Senior High School on Thursday for insulting Ghanaian President Nana Akufo Ado in a viral video have been allowed to resume classes, according to the Education Ministry. Baba Karsise has more. The eight students from Upper East Region were initially suspended before being expelled on Thursday by Ghana Education Service. The eight students were reinstated after they apologized and asked to be allowed back to school. In a video 
One of the students said she and her colleagues are on their knees begging the president, the headmaster, the education office and their fellow Ghanaians for forgiveness. She admitted that the video in which they allegedly insulted the president was child display. One parent told local media that the decision to expel them had traumatized her daughter and pleaded for clemency. The Ghana Education Service described the student's action as very undesirable and contrary to the acceptable standards of the conduct generally required of any student in Ghana's educational system. Earlier, an opposition MP said the decision was harsh and retrogressive and asked the president to intervene. In a statement, the Ghana Education Service said President Akufo Addo had intervened in reversing the expulsion of the Chiana senior high school students. According to a Friday statement from the Ministry of Education, the president had directed the Ghana Education Service to consider an alternative disciplinary action instead of dismissal. Interestingly, in many African countries, insulting the president is a punishable offense. In 2018, a court in Tanzania sentenced two opposition leaders to five months in prison each for insulting President John Magufuli. They were accused of using insulting language against the president, likely to cause breach of peace. In 2019, an attempt was made to introduce a similar law in the Gambia. The draft bill stated that any person who insults or does any act to bring into hatred or contempt or to excite disaffection against the person of the president or the government of the Gambia as by law established, commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not less than $50,000 or a term of imprisonment of not less than one year or to both the fine and imprisonment. The bill did not become law. Babukar Sise, QTV News. From that story by Babu Karsise, let's now recap our main headlines before we leave. We looked at the Gambia government's recently launched national employment policy, which has a set target to create 150,000 jobs in five years. The Gambia government, in partnership with Diaspora, held the Sixth Take Indonesian Forum on Saturday on the theme Supporting Private Sector Action for Public Benefit. 20 farmers and agricultural science students on Saturday concluded three days training on poultry production at the Department of Livestock Veterinary Hall in Abuko. The skillful action of a truck driver who was carrying over 1,800 bags of cement has averted an accident which could have claimed lives in Farafenye in the North Bank region after experiencing brake failure. In international news, eight high school students who were expelled from senior school in Ghana for insulting the Ghanaian president in a viral video have been allowed to resume classes after apologizing to the president. Well, that is all we have for you in this edition of QTV Midday News. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon.